Do you have any examples of key terms that you have had to learn in the new industry of the for-profit space and sales that are just totally different, but the same concept from fundraising? Like help our audience who's more nonprofit oriented. It's a really kind of, interesting... Yeah, question. get their vocabulary up to snuff. In the, in the for-profit world, we communicate through decks. I don't know if that is a thing in the nonprofit world now, but we're constantly talking about decks and PPTs. Remember, I occasionally would create a presentation at a place like UCSF, but that is literally for for any meeting with a high level person, you create a quote unquote deck. Yeah. So that's like your solicitation deck or your primer deck. It's it's just like how we communicate literally almost everything. It's 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 essentially a PowerPoint or a Google Doc. Um, but, but again, it's, it's, it's a deck. We also think very much, I mean, you have a fiscal year at a place, uh, like UCSF or any nonprofit, we we have the same, but we operate and we think in quarters and I mean, quarters are really a big part of the, um, the, the way that we frame our outreach. Um, and you're really comparing quarter Q over Q, Q over Q, quarter over quarter, um, is a really big focus. Um, and so you, you think in more in smaller chunks, uh, that come really quickly. And so, um, you know, there, and there's a, there's a lot of reporting that happens. It, that happens, especially in annual giving to an extent, but probably less so in the major gifts realm. Um, and it, it just overall is something that we think about a lot more. It, I, I will say that when you work for a for-profit also, in my experience, you, you know, you have this, everybody's, marching towards the same goal, which is growth mm. essentially. Uh, and, and so it, it, it align, it, it's easier to find alignment, uh, in a way. And so that's a big, and we always talk about alignment. That's another thing. We're always okay. trying to find alignment. Uh, so that, that's, a, that's a word that, that is used constantly. Whereas in nonprofits, especially very big operations, we yeah. constantly struggle with silos and incentives. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, so getting motivated to pursue different individuals or fundraise fundraise with funders that we don't want to have overlap. Or if we do overlap them, it's figuring out how do we share credit. So I feel like that's something that's been a topic of conversation for many years in terms of incentives and you know what are the metrics for me- for success yes. that a nonprofit KPIs. fundraiser oh, is looking at. Do you, call, do you call them a nonprofit's KPIs? Because that's what we're constantly talking about key performance indicators? Oh yeah. I've been using KPIs for a while now, but I think it may just be me because now I've gotten so integrated into, you know, working with boards that that's what boards use. So that's the sort of thing that is interesting with nonprofits. It depends on sort of where you are in the nonprofit. If you're working with a board, then you're probably using more business terms. If you're working with, you know, the annual giving or mailing, you're probably not. You're probably just being served, you know, what your leadership is telling you. Exactly. Another thing I'll, I'll say is that there are some words that I've brought with me from the nonprofit. Okay, like what? And so in particular, the concept of capacity and inclination. Okay. Is, uh, I, so I learned that in a fundraising training and I use it all the time to this day. So okay. it's the concept that, you know, you really need both in order to make a sale or have a, you know, a successful business um, development opportunity. So capacity is about, you know, does somebody have the ability to hire you or the ability to give? Uh-huh. Um, and inclination, you know, is do they want to or do they have a need that you can support? Well, I actually talk a lot about the golden triangle when we're prospecting. Okay. And the golden triangle is um, affinity. So do they have that inclination like you're talking yeah. about? And then ability would be that capacity. Can they make okay. a significant gift? And then finally, it's access because that's the biggest challenge. You know, a lot of nonprofits are um, doing work that would speak to a Bill Gates or Oprah, but there's no way that all of them have access. Something I, I want to point out that's also a really big difference yeah. that I have found fascinating is when I worked in fundraising, there were so many opportunities to get to know my peers at different institutions. And uh-huh. there was an amazing community of people. I really missed that. Uh, oh, really? In the for-profit realm, especially c- organizations that are like yours, the the it, the culture is not to get to know each other. So I actually don't know very many marketers, to be honest, outside of my company. So I work with some so amazing. If you're a marketer, then reach out to Andrew. We <laughs> need more friends. That's <laughs> yeah, you probably have ten thousand friends on LinkedIn. Interesting, because you know when you work at a Harvard, 
um, you know, like you, you're friends with the person with your job at Yale and yes. at Stanford and you have meetings regularly and yeah. you're like dialing them. And for us, I have no idea who has my job at the most similar companies to the one I work at. And so it's a, it's a really, really big difference. Uh, yeah. There isn't that same uh, camaraderie or community uh, of, of professionals that do what you do uh, outside of your, your, your company. So that, that's a, a huge change. That is super interesting. I, I feel like that might speak to the mentality of the different industries too, right? Yeah. Yeah, potentially. Well, I think, I think at the end of the day, I think those are, you know, that's our competition, yeah. um, these other companies. And so, you know, you, you don't want to tell each other secrets, especially in the university realm, yeah. you know, you close universes of prospects. Yeah. And so you share a lot more because you're not, you don't have as much to lose by yeah. giving your special sauce away or, or sharing your secrets. Um, so I think that that might be a, a difference, but it is something that is, you know, it's, it's a marked change. Yeah. That's interesting. With this latest valuable episode, we'd love to thank you for joining us on the Creating Community for Good podcast. If you found today's show valuable, simply visit our website, creatingcommunityforgood.com to leave a review as well as to get access to additional resources and relevant links from this show. Stay tuned for more episodes.